Good morning. Welcome to Morning Coffee with Sandy. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know I'm a minute late, but actually I'm two minutes late, but I had to go get some more hot coffee because it's that kind of morning. You know what I mean? Don't make me call the flying monkeys. Mm. Yeah, woke up with, you know, like a headache and a throat and it's hot. It's really hot. Yeah, it's hot. Um, yeah, good morning. Good morning. It's Tuesday. This week is like going kind of, isn't it? I'm just not like with it yet today. Sorry. Um, I was late because I was looking up stuff about Carl Reiner because it's his, the anniversary of his death today. He died when he was 98. Um, some of you don't even know that name. And to me, it's like a household word. He was best friends with George Burns. I mean, with, uh, <laughs> sorry, not George Burns, but that's, okay, okay. He was not best friends with George Burns, but he was a comedian and he was kind of a Borscht Belt comedian. So it was a similar kind of genre you know what I'm saying, right? Um, is it yesterday? Wait, I have to look back in my notes. Yeah. Yesterday was the anniversary of Mel Brooks' birthday, okay? Mel Brooks, comedian Mel Brooks. Oh, God, come on. You know Mel Brooks. Um, History of the World Part One, Blazing Saddles, um, Young Frankenstein. You know Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks was like a crit. Right up there on my number, on my on my top five list. His best friend, and for very good reasons, was Carl Reiner. Carl Reiner, also comedian, writer, actor, um, voiceovers, you name it. He did everything in Hollywood for years and years and years and years. Good morning. Good morning, Ginny, and good morning, Indy. Both of you kind of popped up at the same time this morning. Anyway, Carl yeah. Reiner, I got like into reading about all this stuff he'd done and I forgot it was time to get started. So two minutes late, I admit it, I apologize. And I'm not really sorry because I really enjoyed reading about Carl Reiner. Um, so some of you are familiar with Rob Reiner, that's his dad. Yeah, Rob Reiner, also an actor and a director and a writer following his dad's footsteps. Carl Reiner, um, oh, he was so wonderful. He he wrote the um, and directed the Oh God series with George Burns. That's why George Burns came to mind. Um, he wrote The Jerk. He did a lot of stuff with Steve Martin. A lot of the Steve Martin movies you saw, um, Carl Reiner was there behind the scenes. Most famous for the Dick Van Dyke show. I mean, come on. If you're my age or even close, you grew up watching Dick Van Dyke. I mean, Dick and Laura. I mean, Rob and Laura, rather. And Carl Reiner was in the show as well. He not only wrote it and directed it, he was in the show. He was the big boss. He was, um, what was his name? Alan something or other. Somebody will remember. Anyway, Carl Reiner. Oh, and the best of all, the 2,000-year-old man. If you have not heard it, you, you've got you've got to listen to it. It's Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner, the two best buds, goofing off at their most famous in the 2,000-year-old man. You can hear it, I'm sure, on YouTube. It's hilarious. That's all I can tell you. It's worth listening to. I don't, I don't think, I don't know if they ever did it live, you know, like in person or if it was just audio. I never saw it as anything except audio. Well, that was funny. How can you say I never saw it as anything except audio? I've heard it in audio. I've never seen it in video. Thank you. Ta-da. All right, let's move on. Oh, I spilled my coffee and it smeared my ink. Now I don't know what I wanted to tell you. Um, first of all, no tennis again. No tennis. Um, I'm I'm taking a little break for the next few days. And yesterday, I gotta get I gotta get this body back. You know, like not hurting when I wake up, not hurting in the middle of the night. So I went on a walk yesterday, and I came back and iced. I I want to keep moving it. I don't want to like not do anything. I need the exercise. But 
none of that, um, you know, quick turns. And yeah, I think that's what's doing it for me. Ooh, yeah. And yes, it is probably too hot for tennis. Seriously, it's ridiculous. But interestingly to me, it's ridiculous everywhere. And I'm thinking that the fact that everyone everywhere is hot is making it even feel hotter here. I, to me, personally, I don't know. Maybe it's that I have so much compassion for the rest of you who are not used to this heat. I did not see yesterday, Fritzy yesterday, so I have no Fritzy report. I'm assuming she's like the rest of us, warm and happy. What can I say? Um, oh, I suppose I went for a walk yesterday with nephew Mike or Kunkle Mike as uh, as <laughs> Kunkle Mike as as Max calls him. A Kunkle is an uncle who is also your cousin or a cousin you call uncle, but he's not really your uncle. He's your Kunkle. Got that? Okay, that's Max's word. He's Kunkle Mike. Anyway, um, we stopped for, I didn't take water with me. Not because I'm stupid, but because I knew that at the halfway point, we would be somewhere where I could just pick up a bottle of water and I didn't want to carry it, right? And I didn't want to wear that heavy thing around my waist to carry the water. Okay, so we get to the halfway point where there's a place to buy water and it's too early in the morning. So CVS and Walgreens are both closed. And I'm thinking, mm, I'm going to have to beat Mike up and steal his water. But no, instead, there was this like Walmart family food store or something. I guess Walmart has food stores, not just, you know, like department type stores. Anyway, I went in. They had... Um, 12 packs of bottled water on sale for like $3. It was like awesome. And I thought, oh, water is going to be really cheap. Yeah. For $3, you can buy an off brand of a dozen bottles of water, or you can buy one bottle of cold drinking water, no matter what kind you want to choose for $1.83 for one bottle of water. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Could, could we like go back in time for a minute? Do you remember when bottled water first like became a thing? See, if you're younger, bottled water's always been a thing for you. It's always been a thing. I grew up in Skokie, Illinois. The water was fabulous. We used to drink it right out of the tap and never see, think a thing about it. As a matter of fact, all of us used to drink water out of the tap, even if it wasn't delicious. When we moved to California water was delicious, right? Well, it wasn't as good as Skokie, but it wasn't bad. Not where we lived. It was, wasn't that bad at all. But then suddenly people started putting water in bottles. And I can remember the jokes that went on. Do you remember that? It was like, what are you kidding? You turn on the faucet, fill up a bottle, put a cap on it and sell it to me. That's ridiculous. People were like up in arms about the idea of having bottled water. It was like packaged air, you know? We have that now too, right? What are we doing to our world? Yes, yes, thank you, Ginny. Ginny says, we all grew up drinking water out of the, the, the hose. We'd be out in the backyard, we'd be squirting each other, we'd be taking drinks out of the hose, out of anybody's hose. Yeah, of course, those were the days when we didn't wear seatbelts either. <laughs> Who knew? But we made it, didn't we, kids? Woo! Yeah, that. Mm. Okay, enough. Enough about that. The price was ridiculous. But then, if you looked at the price of gasoline, apparently the price of everything is just going sky high. Yeah. So, what can we raise prices on so we have enough money to buy everything else that has the prices going up? That's what's going on in the world. Everybody is like panicking. Oh my God, this is so expensive. I'll have to raise the price on this. This is so expensive. We'll have to raise the price on that. How about if we all just go like this? It's all okay. There's enough for everybody. The more we give away, the more we get. Let's share. Let's be nice. Sorry. I, I'm... 
I'm wanting calmness this morning. Thank you. Kindness and good deeds. Oh, good deeds. So I, when I was at Fritzy's the other day, I was talking to Terry. Terry is one of the women who works at the home where my mother is. And I said to her, this Afghan here in my mother's room is adorable, but it's not Fritzy's. I don't know where it came from and it needs to be given back to its rightful owner. And Terry looked at me and she said, oh no, that's Fritzy's. And I said, no, I, I know what she has and what she doesn't have. This is not hers. And Terry said, no, 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 it was a gift. Really, from whom? And Terry, sweet, sweet girl, Terry said, well, my mom is retired so she crochets all day long and makes blankets. And then at Christmas time has me deliver them to everybody who lives here. So I guess this was a gift from Terry's mother. And then we started talking about what a lovely thing that was. And she said, well, you know, my dad is retired too. And all those fun art projects that you see in the art room, my father is the one who does those. What, what are you talking about? And she said, well, you know all those wooden things that, that the residents paint and decorate? And I said, yeah. She said, my dad puts those together for them and then they paint them. I'll bring you one tomorrow. So Saturday, I forgot to share this with you. I got this. This was put together by her dad painted by one of the residents. His name is Paul, Paul Denert, or Denert. He buys the little wooden projects, glues them together. And in this case, he even, checked this out. Oh, I hope you can see it. He even puts a light inside them so that the residents can paint them and use them as night lights. And she said she wanted me to have one. So I had to share it with you. Not just because it's really cute, but because it's like good deed. I mean, it brings so much joy to the people at Bella Villaggio. So here's hats off to Terry's parents for doing good deeds. I like that. I have a friend um, who many of you have heard me talk about before, who I dedicated my first book to, as a matter of fact, who died of cancer. Um, and there, there is this woman dying of cancer and knitting and crocheting beanies and blankets and things for other cancer patients. Like going crazy, getting the job done for people. Nice, really nice. It is National Almond Butter Crunch Day. Yeah, I don't think I'll be participating. It is also camera day. I mean, come on, who doesn't love taking pictures, right? I think I'm gonna do a big photo dump. I started to do that the other day of all, some, all these like, I did do some, if you follow me on Facebook, not on what do I say, what do I do? But if you like pop into my, Sandy Lynette's page, you'll see I did like a photo dump of all kinds of things that have been going on in the last week or two that I just hadn't had time to post about. Grab your camera. I mean, this is how we take our memories and just go click. Oh, oh, you know what else I did yesterday? I almost forgot to tell you. I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you. Nephew Michael has what you call, oh, I hope I get this right. Oracle 2, which is a virtual reality like helmet and hand things. And I had my first virtual reality experience yesterday. Wow. Wow. I did a really gentle one. I went to my childhood home and I got to walk around and look at the house and see what, you know, what was, I couldn't go in obviously, but um, I was outside the house looking around the neighborhood and you'd stand up and you'd turn around and you get 360 views and you could walk up the street and go back. And then 
I took it. Well, it was taken off me because I think I was having too much fun. Indy took his turn and he actually went to like Star Wars or something, you know, where he could like be more interactive. I wasn't being interactive. I was just being present. It was so cool. It was so cool. I don't know that I would do it as a regular thing, but wow, as a, a an adventure, it was pretty dang awesome. Speaking of adventures, did I tell you that Indy and I are working on booking a trip to South Africa? Oculus. Did I say it wrong? Oculus 2? I thought that's what I called it. Maybe I called it through. Oh, maybe I called it Oracle. It's Oculus. Oculus 2 is what he has. Um, anyway, I was struggling with trying to understand all the rules for this Africa thing. And um, Indy reminded me that instead of just being frustrated and getting upset with him for not doing anything about it, all I had to do was say to him, hey, could you take this on? Because I'm frustrated with it. And voila, using my words really worked because now Indy's taking care of it. And hopefully I'll have some news for you about us going on a photo safari um like in August, like really soon, August, maybe September. And I know we have a lot of members in What Do I Say, What Do I Do, who live in South Africa. Just saying, I'm going to be there. Just just telling you, I'll be coming to a neighborhood near you. Whoa. And I want to see the baby lion cubs again. That was like the best thing I did in Africa. I mean, it was the whole trip was amazing when I was there, but there's this park where they have this enclosed area and this man-made mountain that's like steps to form a mountain. And you sit on these steps and they have like, I don't know, two dozen baby lions, just little baby lion cubs that come and climb all over you. And they, they you know how little puppies bite your hands like that? And their teeth are sharp, but so you have to be kind of careful, but they're just babies. They're so cool. I want to do that again. Okay. Um, do you remember the whole Bernie Madoff thing? Wasn't that long ago. 2009, he was sent to jail for swindling people out of their money. And, and he was sentenced to 150 years. Yeah. Hmm. That's a lot of years. But I think there are a lot of people who think he should have been sentenced to 300 years. A um, couple of years ago, 2007... The first iPhone went on sale. How about that? It's only that recently that we had Apple iPhones. Now they're like everywhere. Yeah, Apple iPhones. Not that old. Happy birthday, Apple iPhone. Okay, we're always talking about how cars and planes, you know, Lear jets and uh, Ford cars are named after the people who founded the companies. Well, today is, I guess it's his birthday, Dr. William James Mayo. It was not mayonnaise. No, it was the Mayo Clinic. He uh, founded the Mayo Clinic in 1939. Thank you. You've done a lot of good. Happy birthday to Richard Lewis. His like godson used to work for me. So, you know, I knew a lot of Richard Lewis, comedian. Um, so his jokes were were part of the, um, they were just part of the way things were at Balloon Affair because his, his godson, I can't remember his name now. He used to work for me and he was just adorable. He and his wife had moved, young couple, had moved to California from New York, which is where Richard Lewis is from. And they were having a tough time getting started and he, he needed a job, and he worked at Balloon Affair, playing kazoo and delivering balloons. But a lot of people got their starts that way. A eh, JB? JB used to do that, too. Um, I, have, I have a friend who is a multimillionaire now who started out delivering balloons and blowing kazoos. Right, Jeff? Huh? You know who you are. Yeah. And Kimmy Kins, she ended up being manager, uh, the assistant manager of the store, now she's got this whole family and this business and she's awesome. And there's a couple people um, who opened their own balloon businesses afterwards. Balloon Affair hired everybody. And I have so many people in my life who I know because they worked for me at Balloon Affair. Yeah, 
That's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, um, moving right along. Did I mention that Carl Reiner was 98 when he died? And he and Mel Brooks used to have coffee together every day. They were BFF, like for real. Oh, loved him. Um, now I don't remember the year, but there was a guy named Alfred Mosher Butts. Alfred Butts. And Alfred Butts in the 1930s, he invented, it was, you know, a tough time. It was during the... Um, during the time when the market had crashed, Black Friday had happened, people were, it was a depression. It was the depression, the Great Depression. He was out of work and he was trying to come up with some idea of what he could do to make some money. So he was very smart and he loved words and he couldn't make any money at what he was doing. So he thought, well, I'll invent a game. So he invented this game and he called it Lexico. And it was a really cool game, but it didn't catch on. And then he changed the name because he thought maybe the name was what was stopping him. He changed the name to Crisscross Words. Still didn't catch on. But then around 1950s, someone who worked at Macy's and was a buyer for Macy's saw a bunch of people sitting around playing this game they changed the name to Scrabble and it became an overnight sensation. And now there are so many gazillions of Scrabble games sold all over the world. So don't kick your butts. Thank your butts. We got Scrabble. I love that game. I love, love, love that game. Um, there was some kind of a championship and I'm sorry, that's what got Unfortunately, it's what got smeared when I spilled my coffee. But there was a championship like in the British National Scrabble Championship. And this guy got like in three games, which is what they played for the championship. He scored like 1,500 points in three games. It was like something unheard of. And my guess is they, they didn't cheat and look words up without, you know, a penalty. I'm just guessing. Um, so happy birthday, Scrabble. I mean, happy birthday, Scrabble, as we know it. The game was the same, but the name got changed. Um, 1921 to 1995. Today is the anniversary of the death of Lana Turner. Lana Turner was the sweater girl. Um, a sweater girl, beautiful actress, um, one one of the you know forties hot hotties, Lana Turner. Yeah, she was a pinup. She was everything. She was in a movie in the I'm gonna say late sixties, early seventies called Madam X. Yeah, she was in a movie called Madam X. And it was playing at the theater that I was working at. I was not, I, not at the candy counter. I had come up in the world by this point. And I was working in Inglewood, California, near where the Fabulous Forum now sits. Although I think they might have changed even the name of the Fabulous Forum. Anyway, I was the, the girl in the cashier's booth. And that was one of those old fashioned 40 looking, 40s looking theaters, you know, where the cashier's booth sat separate from the building itself. So you have the building and then there's this um, like giant area that's, that's all tiled and, and built in except in the front, you know, and the cashier's booth sits right in the center of that. So people could come in off the street and be in a covered area, but not quite into the movie theater yet. You get that, right? So I'm like in this separate booth. I have this own, this little house of my own. So I'm sitting in this booth on my giant chair and I've got, you know, all the little things to punch to have tickets come out. And I've got my change up there and my cash drawer and, periodically the somebody would come out to say hi to me, you know, cause it could get lonely out there if it was like between shows. 
because I had to stay in there even when, you know, there'd be this big rush to buy tickets and then the show would start. So there'd be nobody there for a while. And people would come out and say hi to me and chat with me through the window. A couple of times a day, the assistant manager would come out, unlock my door, empty my safe, take the money out, lock me back in. So one day, Madam X is playing and the rush is over. And there's only like, oh, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes left to the movie. So I know my shift is going to end pretty soon. And I'm sitting there kind of bored, you know, looking around, doing whatever it was that I did when I was being bored, sitting in that booth. And this guy comes sauntering over, youngish guy. I could probably still describe him to you pretty well. Um, and he says... Hey, just like that. Hey. And I said, you know, I can sell you a ticket, but the movie's going to be over in about 10 or 15 minutes. You want, might want to wait until it starts again. And he said, I don't want to see no movie. And he pulls out a gun. And uh, true story, my friends. And he puts the gun in the opening of the window, pointed right at me. And he says, give me all your money or I'm going to shoot you. Do you know what it's like to be in the middle of a bad dream and not know what to do? There was an instant where I thought, hey, I can't give him this money. It's not mine. <laughs> that was a stupid thought. Um, so I said, I don't have any money. They, they have me drop all the bills in a safe. I can't get to the safe. That was the truth. He said, okay. Give me your rings. I was a newly married young woman. And I had my wedding ring on. And I tried to get my wedding ring off. He's got a gun pointed at me, telling me to hurry up. And I can't get my friggin' ring off my finger. I was a newlywed. You gain weight when you first get married because now you're cooking all the time, right? Right. So here I am, like a 19-year-old newlywed with a guy with a gun pointed in my face, and I'm trying to get off my ring to give it to him. I can't get it off. And I just looked at him and I said, I can't. I'm trying. I can't get it off. He said, all right, then give me the coins. Okay, that I can do. So I have this coin machine next to me. So I go to grab the quarters stupid move on my part. I go to grab the quarters out of the machine because that's the only way you can get them is to like grab them like that. And I grabbed more than I could really handle holding them like this. So the quarters start spilling all over the, the tabletop where I am making this loud noise. I'm sure somebody is going to come out. I'm sure he's going to shoot me. I don't know. I, I'm like, and he's shaking the gun and grabbing the quarters and, you know, pulling them out to him. And he looks at me and he says, all right, I'm walking off that direction. And I'm going to be watching you. I'll be walking backwards. I'm going to be watching you. And if I see you turn around and look at me, I'm going to shoot you and kill you. I don't want to kill you, but I'm going to have to kill you. Don't look. Oh, come on, seriously. Why do you suppose Sarah turned to a pillar of stone? My Hebrew name is Sarah. I mean, he didn't shoot me, but I had to go like this. So I watched him walk away. And as soon as he was gone, I started screaming for help. I couldn't get out of the, of the cage. They had to come and let me out. Somebody finally came. There must've been a panic button or maybe they put one in later. I didn't have one. Anyway, um, somebody came out to get me and I'm yelling, I've been robbed. I've been robbed. They call the police and I am like this, right? And I remember the cop says to me, can you describe him? And I said, sort of. How tall was he? Oh, I don't know that. I mean, I couldn't tell him how tall someone was. I said, did you notice I'm, I'm like this big. 
anybody over five feet is tall in my book, right? So I didn't do a good job on that part of it, but I did describe him as best I could. And the cop looks at me and he goes, you okay? You seem upset. And I said, upset? I said, I don't know about you, but this is the first time somebody's held a gun in my face. Anyway, it took me so long to get over that incident. Every time a male reached into his pocket to get like his wallet or his handkerchief or anything, I thought he was going for a gun and I would start shaking. It took a long time to get over that. Yep. Okay. That's my scary story. Um, word art. Speaking of fear, word art from, from what do I say? What do I do? is perfect for this morning. The word art for today is fear knocked. Positivity answered the door. There was no one there. Positivity is going to knock fear on its butt every single time. Yeah. 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 Be positive. Have a great day. I'm going to. There. No more call the monkeys. Just a little Wizard of Oz. Be safe. Be sane. Be safe and sane. Have a sip. And a smile. A safe, sane, smiley day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.